Okay, so the topic that we're going to be discussing today are the levels of organization that exists within the human body. So let's go ahead and get started. So before we go into the levels of organization, I want to talk about cells and how they become specialized. Well, here's an egg cell with 23 chromosomes in it. You might remember that egg cells are haploid. And on the night of fertilization, a bunch of sperm cells, which are also haploid, a bunch of sperm cells are released from the father. Now only one of these haploid sperm cells is actually going to penetrate and fuse with the egg and that creates again what's called a zygote, a fertilized egg created from the union of the, of the nucleus of the sperm and the nucleus of the egg. Ultimately the rest of the sperm cells are going to eventually die but what we're left with is a zygote. Let's talk more about this. So that zygote is going to divide by the process of mitosis, where one, the one cell zygote divides and becomes two cells. The two divide by mitosis to make four. The four become eight. The eight becomes 16. And what we end up getting is this lump of cells called embryonic stem cells. What's interesting about embryonic stem cells is that they have the potential to become any type of cell in the body. They are cells that lack specialization. Now, as a woman's pregnancy continues, eventually a, a, a baby will be born, and the average human is made up of around 100 trillion cells and with over 200 different kinds of cells in the body. But we can trace these 200 types of cells back to what are called embryonic stem cells. Let's look at this in a little more detail. So when we look at embryonic stem cells, what we're going to show you are two processes called determination and differentiation. And this is what's ultimately going to lead stem cells into becoming specialized. Let's start with the process known as determination. So this usually takes place early in development. Chances are the mother doesn't even realize that she's pregnant when the process of determination takes place. What happens is that there are genes or segments of DNA. There are genes inside of the nucleus of all of these that begin to activate in a unique sequence. I'm going to make genes comparable to light switches. And so what we have here are nine light switches, which are symbolic of nine genes that exist within the cell's nucleus. Now, in reality, we have about 25,000 genes. I'm illustrating only nine. But during the process called determination, different genes in, uh, begin to activate. So in the stem cell to the left, you can see that those, uh, those genes marked on became activated. But in the stem cell to the right, the same genes to begin with, but a different combination of genes activate. This is what happens during determination genes become active in the stem cells, and this process is irreversible. Now this process is going to lead to the process called differentiation. So in the process of differentiation, this is where the stem cells actually acquire the structures and the functions of a specialized cell. So this is what, what's going to happen is that this, the embryonic stem cell is going to produce a very specific combination of proteins. You know, just for simplicity, I want to remove all the other stem cells and just highlight these two right here. Well, notice how the, the, cell, the stem cell on the left has a different combination of genes that have been activated. This combination perhaps will allow the stem cell to become a nerve cell. However, the cell on the right, because it has a different combination of genes activated, the cell on the right might become a red blood cell. The cells have differentiated and become different. So as we move on now, we can now focus on cells, the basic unit of life. When we look at how the body is organized, yes, there's over 100 trillion cells in the body and there's over 200 different kinds of cells. But cells are the most basic unit of life that can still carry on and function on their own. You might know that cells have smaller parts to them, for instance, a Golgi body. But a Golgi body removed is incapable of functioning on its own. A cell is the most basic unit. But cells themselves can be organized into a larger unit. You might know that cells 
can be organized into tissues. Tissues are groups of cells that work together to accomplish a similar job. And there's really four different kinds of tissue that I want to mention. The first being muscle tissue. Muscle tissue is designed to stretch and contract. Your muscles are designed to stretch and contract. If you want to straighten out your arm and then curl your arm up, the, cell, uh, the muscle cells have to be able to stretch and contract. They have to be flexible. Skeletal, uh, skeletal muscle cells and cardiac muscle cells, these are examples that you can find within the body. When you look at this picture right here, again, here's, a, here's a, some muscles of their arm, and you can see the biceps in the middle. You know, when, uh, when this, you can picture this person's arm extending straightward and then curling up and extending straightward and curling up, and every time it, it does, the muscles have to be able to stretch and be flexible, stretch and elongate when you straighten out the arm, and then bunch back up when you curl the arm back up. So a second type of tissue is what is called connective tissue. The reason for the picture here is because bone, bone, fat, tendons, these are examples of connective tissue. Another example you're probably familiar with are called ligaments. We'll talk more about ligaments in just a moment, but again, the purpose of connective tissue is really to support the body. So in this picture of the knee here, if you, you imagine your leg, well, your big leg bone uh, your big thigh bone is called your femur, and uh, beneath your femur, you have your shin bone, also called your tibia. Well, these two bones are connected by ligaments. Ligaments are connected to your femur and your tibia to really hold your bones together. You may have heard of the blue ligament called your ACL and the green ligament called your PCL, but there's also other ligaments that are colored in gray. Well, you can imagine that these ligaments can be torn the more stress you place on them. You know, sports such as tennis, volleyball, basketball, football, sports where you constantly start, stop, change directions, jump, put a lot of stress on these ligaments to the point where they could actually rip and tear off of the bone and then they need to be surgically, uh, surgically repaired. But the purpose of ligaments is to support the body. In this case, these ligaments support your body by connecting bone together. So a third type of tissue is, is called epithelial tissue. And this is the tissue that's really covered, that covers and protects parts of the body. In the picture, we see various layers of skin cell. Skin cells. Skin cells are great examples of epithelial tissue. You also have epithelial inside of your stomach, lining the inside of your stomach, covering and protecting the inside of your stomach against the digestive acids that help to break down our food. And so here's a picture of some of the different kinds of epithelial cells, but again, the, notice that, that they all really cover and protect. That's the purpose of epithelial cells. And the final type of tissue I want to mention is called nerve or nervous tissue. And the purpose of nervous tissue is to transmit electrical signals to and from the brain. You know, if your brain uh, wants to send a signal to the foot, maybe you're playing a game of soccer and you want to kick the ball, your brain will send a message down your spinal cord eventually to the muscles in your foot. And in between your brain and your foot are, is a bunch of nerve tissue that is designed to send that, those electrical signals. Well, what about the next level of organization? You have what's called an organ. An organ is simply a collection of tissues. In the picture, we see, for instance, lungs. Lungs are, are, two, are two organs that are made of, up of a collection of epithelial, of epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue. All types of tissue make up what we call lungs. And lungs are just one kind of organ, of course. Of course, the heart is an organ made from all types of tissues. Uh, the liver is an organ made from different types of tissues. And so the next level of organization up we would come to would be an organ system. It's a collection of organs that all work together to accomplish a purpose. In the, in the picture, it's the organs of 
the respiratory system. You can see the lungs and the trachea and the larynx and the pharynx. These are all organs that collectively make up what we call the respiratory system and it's how we breathe. You know, we obtain nutrition by the breakdown of food, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine. These organs help to break and digest our food so we can obtain nutrition. Here's a picture of the endocrine system and, you know, the thyroid gland and the thymus and the adrenal glands and the pancreas. These organs all release hormones and that's the main function of the endocrine system. It's what controls the hormones in our body. And so ultimately we come to the upper level of organization and simply the overall organism. Uh, you know, the human body is made up of many organ systems working together. The human body is made up of a nervous system, a digestive system, an endocrine system, a respiratory system, a circulatory system, a reproductive system. The list goes on and on. And the final analogy I would like to make would be these Russian figurine dolls right here. You've probably seen these before where the small doll can be inserted into the next one up and the next one and the next one. So, for instance, cells, tissue, organ, organ system, organism represents the different levels of the human body. And a, cell, a, cell, a bunch of cells make up a tissue, and a bunch of tissues make up an organ. A bunch of organs make up an organ system, and several organ systems makes up one organism. So I hope that analogy is clear uh, to illustrate the levels of organization within the human body. And so there you go. If you're in my biology class, pause the video, try to answer these on a separate sheet of paper. I'm happy to check your answers either before school or after school one day. Good luck.